Okay. Um, There we go. Okay, uh, before we get started, anybody have trouble with exam to retry? Did y'all successfully take it, assuming you wanted to? All right, what about y'all out there in Zoom land? Anybody out there still having issues with it? I want to get exam to retry resolved for spring break. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so we, we want to do section 7.4 today. Uh, it's all about sum, product to sum and sum to product. So there's these eight identities that are all huge. Am I yelling at y'all? Okay. Okay. So here's all these identities. The first thing I want you to notice is like, if you look over here, these are your sum and difference for cosine just added together. The sum and difference for sine just added together. Right, that's all those are. We're just taking these and either adding them so like those go away, or we're like adding these so like those go away, or we're subtracting them. That's all that is. So if you remember these and you know how to add, you don't need to memorize all this. Now these over here are actually the same identities. Like look at this. This alpha and alpha minus beta is an angle. Alpha plus beta is another angle. This is cosine plus sine, cosine plus sine, right? So this, this is the same as this. All you're doing is moving the two over here and you're relabeling the angles, okay? So you call that alpha and that beta, then this becomes alpha plus beta over two and that one becomes alpha minus beta over two, all right? So that's all that is. Like you don't need to memorize eight new identities that are all super long and all that. Okay. Here's your transformation. You just replace alpha with an alpha plus beta over two and beta with an alpha minus beta over two. I'll show you why that is again. I've done it two or three times already. But every one of these, if you remember these, you just add them or subtract them and you're going to get what you need. Okay. So let's look at some examples here. And not once am I going to pull up that. Uh, uh, that chart with all those identities, okay? So if I have something like this, I look at it and I say, okay, here's an angle, there's an angle, it's a cosine times a cosine. They want us to write it as a sum. Okay, it has a cosine times a cosine. Well, this is the one that has cosine times cosine. Let me just take these dudes, right? And if I add these, those cancel. I got a cosine alpha plus beta and a cosine alpha minus beta. And these are the same thing. I get two cosine alpha, cosine beta. This is my alpha and that's my beta. So this guy, according to this, is just cosine of the sum. 7x plus 3x is 10x plus cosine of the difference. 7 minus 3 is 4. And we're done. Of course, you can simplify this. Here, it doesn't matter which one you called alpha and which one you called beta. They're both inside of a cosine, right? Seven plus three is the same as three plus seven. Seven minus three is four. But if I did a three minus seven, I would get a negative there, right? But cosine is even. So this minus sign doesn't even matter. These are the same thing, plus or minus, because cosine is even, that minus and that doesn't even matter. So for this one, because of symmetry, it doesn't matter which one you call alpha, which one you call beta, okay? And again, I just did this. I was like, eh, cosine times cosine. Well, these have cosine times cosine. So I didn't have to memorize identities for that. Let's look at another one here. 
Okay. Same thing. I see a cosine times a cosine. I am going to do this in my head this time. If I add these, I know those go away and I get twice that. Okay. So once you've done this, derived it a few times, usually by then you can start doing it in your head, right? Oh, but there's not a two here. Okay, fine. All right. So this, here's my alpha, here's my beta. So this guy is one half cosine of the sum, two theta and four theta is six theta. And then the difference, two theta minus four theta is negative two theta, but I can just write that as a positive two theta because cosine is even. And we're done. Are y'all good with this so far? Yeah, all right, good. And there's a bunch of blah, blah, blah. Let's take another example. Uh, write this product as a sum with only sine and cosine. Well, this is a sine times a cosine, mixed trig. So sine is an odd function that has the mixed trig. So I would use these. All right, uh, if I add them, right, um, those will go away. I got alpha plus beta, it's the sine of alpha minus beta, and these are the same, two sine, alpha, cosine, beta. All right, I have a sine and a cosine. That's my alpha, that's my beta. All right, but there's not a two in front. Okay, so what? There we go. So this guy is one half sine of the sum, four and two is six, plus sine of the difference. Four minus two is two. Here, the one you call alpha and the one you call beta matters, okay? The alpha is the one inside the sine, the beta is the one inside the cosine. This is your alpha and that's your beta. So here you wanna have four theta minus two theta. You don't wanna have two theta minus four theta. I mean, adding them, it doesn't matter, but subtracting, you need to have four minus two because sine of two theta is not the same as sine of negative two theta, right? Sine is an odd function. That minus sign would come out, make that negative, and it would be a problem, all right? So here, the one you call alpha and the one you call beta matter. Like if you have a triangle and you're like, this is A and this is B and this is C, I could have called that A and I could have called that B. It doesn't matter because a squared plus b squared is the same as b squared plus a squared, right? All right. But here's alpha and beta matter. Uh, this one, they, they're just trying to throw you off by having these x's and y's, right? x plus y is an angle. I could call it alpha. x minus y is also an angle. I could call it beta. This is just sine alpha cosine beta, right? which we just did, sine alpha, cosine beta. We just derived that, right? Mixed trig, we just added these, got what we needed, right? So this guy is gonna be one half sine alpha plus beta. If this is alpha and that's beta, there's alpha, that's beta. And then I have a plus. Now the difference, here's alpha. And here's beta. Okay, we could simplify this stuff. X plus X is 2X. Y minus Y goes away. X minus X goes away. Y minus a negative Y. Y. All right. See, if, if you're memorizing these identities or you're going like, oh, sine of x plus y, cosine of x minus y, and you start going up here and you start thinking, well, maybe it's like this, right? But these are added together, not multiplied, right? You're screwed. Does that make sense? If you're just looking at the chart, trying to see what matches, that's exactly why they put that there, right? This is a product, something times something, right? If you can't look at that and recognize this is an angle by any other name, and this is an angle by any other name, you see these, you might start thinking these, right? If you're just looking at it, right? These are over two, eh, 
right? Mine aren't, you know, you might be looking at that, but that's a sum, not a product, okay? So this relabeling the angles is really important. You need to recognize that alpha is an angle, beta is an angle, alpha minus beta is also an angle, alpha plus beta is also an angle, alpha plus beta over two is also an angle, alpha minus beta over two is also an angle. These are all different angles. I could have called this alpha and I could have called that beta, but that would have made these angles have big ugly names instead. You see what I mean? You can call stuff what you want, but whatever you name these changes what those are named, okay? Because again, to go from here to there, this is the same as that. I'm just putting the two over here, and then I want to, this guy is that guy. I'm just saying, I want to call that alpha and I want to call that beta. Well, if you do that, that becomes those, okay? Just relabeling stuff. And you'll see why it's those here in a second. I'll show you again. So here's your identities. Let's look at another uh, example here. All right, we have a cosine times a cosine. That's a product. We need a product to sum, all right? Well, cosine times a cosine, those show up here. So if I just add these, those go away. So I got a cosine alpha plus the beta plus the cosine of an alpha minus beta is two cosine alpha cosine beta. All right, those are the same. Same thing we've done several times. There's no two out front. Okay, fine. Okay. So cosine type says this is going to be one half cosine of the sum, three and five is eight, plus cosine of the difference. Uh, five minus three is two. We're done, all right? We don't have to memorize eight long identities. We don't even have to refer to that chart. We don't have to Google it or look it up. You can derive it in one step. Is it another one? All right, this one is a cosine cosine. There's your alpha, there's your beta. We just derived the same one, right? It's this one, the one we derived four times now. We could derive it four times faster than we could look up the chart and try to find it, right? So this is just going to be one half cosine of the sum. Uh, 11 and one is 12. 12 pi over 12 is this pi. The difference, 11 minus one is 10. 10 pi over 12 is the same as five pi over six, right? So this is five pi over six, okay? Uh, and we can evaluate this. This is cosine of pi is minus one. And then cosine of five pi over six would be a negative root three over two. This is a minus a half minus root three over four, right? We didn't have to do that. Y'all already know this triangle. Remember your 15 degrees? That's the same thing as pi over 12. Uh, this is uh, root six plus root two, oh, no, root six minus root two over four. And this is root six plus root two over four, right? So you could have just evaluated that these, right? This would have been, um, that's, where is 11 pi over 12? That would be this triangle right here, pi over 12 is 11 pi over 12, right? So you could have used that same triangle and just wrote down the answer, okay? If y'all remember that triangle. Uh, but they, they specifically said to use this formula, so we use their formula. Here's where they talk about the relabeling of angles. Okay. But we're just going to do it on the fly. So when I look at this, I see a difference in signs. That's an angle. This is an angle, right? You might want to be like, this is my alpha and this is my beta, right? 
But when I look up here, a difference in sign, okay? These are products, right? If I call that alpha and I call that beta, I could do sine alpha minus sine beta, okay? Bring it. So you might not think to look at this, okay? Okay, like if I called that alpha and that beta, that would give these different names. But basically, I'm looking at a difference here. So if I subtract these, okay, I got sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta. Right? Again, I'm going to relabel these alpha and beta here in a minute. But if I subtract them, this minus itself, that goes away. And I got a cosine two sine beta minus a negative. So I'm getting two cosine alpha sine beta, right? So I'm, in this case, that's an alpha, that's a beta. There's just two angles. These are two different angles. But if I want this to be called alpha and I want this to be called beta, what happens is what used to be alpha becomes alpha plus beta over two. And what used to be beta becomes alpha minus beta over two. So this is the identity we're going to use. All right. So that's the switcheroo. I wrote it up here on your little chart. Why is that? Okay. Well, let's, I'll show you why real quick, why this is true. Okay. If I call this X and I call this Y, then I want to rewrite these in terms of X and Y. I'm saying X is alpha plus beta and y is alpha minus beta. If I add these, I get x plus y, beta minus beta goes away, I'm getting alpha is x plus y over two, okay? So this would be x plus y over two. And if I subtract these instead, if I subtract them, I get x minus y, Alpha minus alpha goes away. Beta minus a negative beta is two beta. So you can see beta is x minus y over two. So this is x minus y over two. So I have sine of an angle minus sine of a different angle is equal to two cosine of the sum over two sine. But so we have it now in terms of x and y, but just relabel x. We don't want to call it x. We want to call it alpha. We don't want to call it beta. We want to call it y. So this alpha plus beta, so you're just relabeling them again. So you call X alpha plus beta, Y alpha minus beta, you write this in terms of X and Y, but we like to call our angles alpha and beta. So just replace X with alpha and Y with beta, okay? So you're just relabeling it twice so it looks pretty. Okay, so that's how, how that works. It's the same every time. So this guy is going to be two, Cosine, the sum divided by two. Four plus two is six, divided by two is three. And here we have the difference. Uh, four minus two is two, divided by two is one. Okay, and here the one that you call uh, alpha and the one you call beta is important, okay? The beta goes with the one that has the minus in front of it, okay? That's important, right? Uh, the two theta is the beta, okay? So here, it's important which one you call alpha and which one you call beta. Does that make sense? Why? They're not the same, right? This one has a minus in front of it. So this has to be the one that you call beta. All right, so let's look at this thing. Here's a sum of signs, okay? Here's my alpha, here's my beta. Since it's a sum of signs, I'm gonna use these. Okay, this is gonna be my alpha and that's gonna be my beta here in a second. So if I add these, uh, if I add these, those go away and I get two sine alpha cosine beta, okay? But I want this to be called alpha and I want this to be called beta. And the consequence 
is what used to be alpha becomes alpha plus beta over two. And what used to be beta becomes alpha minus beta over two. So there's our identity. That's the one in the chart, okay? So this guy, according to this, is gonna be two sine, add the angles, divide by two. Three and one is four, divide by two is two. We have a cosine here. Three minus one is two, divided by two is one. Uh, there we go. Cosine, cosine. Now looking at this, I'm thinking of this triangle, right? Uh, cosine of 15 degrees is root six plus root two over four. And then cosine of 75, that's the same triangle, but like this, right? I'm subtracting. And then this side was, the same thing but with a minus, right? So that's me using the triangle that we already knew, right? But they want us to use this, this thing. So we have a difference in cosine, all right? Uh, we have a difference in cosines. I'm gonna use these. I'm gonna do this minus this, because I'm gonna call that alpha and that beta here in a second. I'll have cosine alpha plus beta minus cosine alpha minus beta. And if I'm subtracting these, uh, this minus that goes away. Negative this minus negative that, I'm getting two negative ones this time, sine alpha, sine beta, okay? And if I want this to be called alpha, and if I want this to be called beta, then what used to be alpha becomes alpha plus beta over two. And what used to be beta becomes alpha minus beta over two. So here's my identity that I'm gonna use. Instead of looking it up, I derived it in two steps, right? So this guy is going to be uh, negative two sine, add the angles, divide by two. 15 and 75 is 90, divide by two. And now we want the difference divided by two. 15 minus 75 is a negative 60 divided by two is a negative 30. Again, which one is alpha and which one is beta is important here, okay? The beta came from the trig function that had the minus sign in front of it, okay? And then we can simplify. Sine of 45 degrees is root two over two. Sine of negative 30 is a minus one half. So, Two's canceled, the minus is canceled, I'm getting root two over two. Okay. Well, what did we get up here with this guy? Root six minus root six, root two minus a negative root two. Uh, it'd be a positive, minus a negative is positive. So I got a root two and another root two. And then we have a four on the bottom, which is root two over two. I mean, we should get the same answer either way, right? Okay. Uh, this guy. Prove this identity. Okay, well, if we weren't in the section that we're in where these things keep showing up, I would look at this and I would take a totally different approach. I would look like, well, this just has T and this has four t's and two t's. I would replace cosine with cosine squared t minus sine squared t, right? Remember your double angle for cosine, right? Uh, if I make these both theta, that's two theta. Theta, 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 theta. You get cosine squared minus sine squared. That's the double angle for cosine. Comes straight from your sum and difference, right? So I would get rid of the two in favor of just a T because there's a T there. And then I do the same thing here. I'd be like, well, that's a cosine squared two T minus sine squared two T. And then I would apply the double angle again to each of those to turn the two T's into T's because there's just a T over there. That would be my first, my approach. Does that make sense? Get rid of all the fours and the twos and turn them into just twos. But since we're in the section we're in, let's, uh, 
let's use our, our, our skills here. This is a difference of cosines. So for the top, I would use this guy. So for the top of this thing, uh, if I do a difference here, I do a cosine alpha plus beta minus cosine alpha minus beta. If I subtract them, uh, those go away and I'm getting a negative two sine alpha sine beta. But I want this to be alpha and I want that to be beta. So I'd be like, if I relabel these, then over here, the alpha becomes alpha plus beta over two and the beta becomes alpha minus beta over two. So that's what I could replace the top with, okay? The bottom, we have a sum of signs. So I would add these signs together. And so if I add these, I'm gonna get a sine alpha plus beta plus a sine alpha minus beta. If I add these, those cancel, I get two of those. Okay, but if I call this alpha, and I call this beta, then my old alpha becomes alpha plus beta over two, and my old beta becomes alpha minus beta over two. So there's the top and here's the bottom. So if I'm going to prove this guy, and one reason why I might think to do this, right, my left-hand side here, if I substitute them, one reason why I might think to do this is if I add these, and divide by two, six divided by two is three T. Well, that sucks because I just have T, but four minus two is two divided by two is T. So I'm hoping the three T's will cancel out. So the left-hand side here, this cosine minus cosine, all right, we'll use this, all right? So for the top, uh, the difference in the cosines is a negative two sine, add them, divide by two. Four plus two is six, divided by two is three. And then we have sine, uh, the difference divided by two. Four minus two is two, divided by two is one. So that's the top. Now for the bottom, the sines, we're gonna use this identity. Right, the one we just derived specifically for this purpose. Um, so the sum of signs, it says it's two sine, add the angles, divide by two. Four and two is six, divide by two is three. And then we have a cosine. Add the, uh, subtract the angles, divide by two. Four minus two is two, divide by two is one. So you can see the twos cancel, the signs cancel. We have a minus sign in front of tangent, which is the other side. Right. So just using the identities, substituting these straight out of the identities gives you the answer immediately. Right? Because I can't ever remember these, I just derive them every time I need them in one step. All right? A couple more days and I'll remember them all. If I sat down and just like, I'm gonna memorize this chart, I'd wanna blow my brains out. <laughs> that's not what mathematicians do, right? That's not math. I'm sorry it was taught to you that way for, you know, 12 years or whatever. You know, if they'd have taught math to be what it actually is, y'all would all be mathematicians. Okay, there we go, let's see. Now what? Now what? There we go, here's, and these things are so important that once we get this far, they're like, they don't even mention them anymore. They're like, just use your old identities now. I mean, why have a bunch of examples that don't even use the stuff they've introduced? <laughs> I don't understand this book, but hey, okay, we'll prove this identity. Um, this guy has a two theta, but these don't. Okay. And we got this stupid cosecant over here. So I'm going to work with both sides at the same time. That's why I'm putting this symbol down. Cosecant is the same as one over sine, uh, right? 
And then over here, let's get rid of the double angle. Cosine of two theta is cosine squared minus sine squared. Okay, so now everything is just theta on both sides, no two thetas. Uh, I see that over here, everything is divided by sine squared, right? Well, this guy is. Well, I'm going to write a sine squared over a sine squared here, right? This is just a number one. That way I could say, well, everything over here is divided by sine squared and just like that. So now I'm just comparing this to this, right? So I'm going to manipulate this now. This only has sines in it. This has cosines and sines. I can always get rid of cosine in favor of one minus sine squared. Let me try that again. Sine squared. So if I replace this with that, I'm getting one minus sine squared minus sine squared. And these are exactly the same thing. So I, I worked with both sides at the same time. This equals this, if and only if this equals this, if and only if this equals this. And since these are identical, those have to be the same. Right? Now, familiar with the two different approaches, right? Sometimes you take one side and just simplify it till it turns into the other side. Sometimes you want to work with both sides at the same time. So you use this symbol instead. You're equating equalities, if you will. And this is important. You want to be able to do this stuff because all these identities, proving I, what's the point of proving identities? Eventually, these are going to be X's and they're going to say solve for X. And you're going to want to take an equation and replace it with a simple equation where you can easily solve for x. That's the whole point. So you do want to be able to do this. I, I hate the fact that the book presents every example where you just go left hand side till it turns into the right hand side. And then the next section you're solving for x and you have no skill doing this. And that's all you do the whole time. Okay, so it's important to distinguish the difference between the chain equality and this logical equivalent. Uh, here's another identity. Here's the last one of the section. All right. Okay. Verify this identity. Okay, well, this one, we have a big pile of stuff equals something simple. So I'm going to do the left hand side and I'm just going to simplify it till I turn into the right hand side and chain equality. What is this? What's the best number there is? What's the first number we ever discovered? One. Cotangent is one over tangent, isn't it? Yeah, so that's just one. If this is just one, well, one minus cosine squared is sine squared by the Pythagorean theorem, right? So proof is obviously, right? You should be able to look at that and go one minus cosine squared is sine squared, duh, right? Y'all should have that ability by now. Y'all should be practicing so that simple stuff like this is simple because the homework problems aren't going to be this simple. The example problems are always so simple you don't even need to do anything, right? And there is, there's a reason for it, right? They want you to be able to understand it and then extrapolate from that, right? If you can't look at this and go, this is one minus cosine squared, which is sine squared, after you know a few seconds, you need to practice more. So how could we do this? You could be like, this is one over tangent, right? And so this would be a one minus cosine squared, which is uh, sine squared, <laughs> which is the right hand side, right? Or you could be like, okay, I'm going to turn everything to sines and cosines. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Then we have minus cosine squared. And so this is just one. And then you have cosine squared. And then that is sine squared, right? Which is the right-hand side. You know, if you're going to write it all out to convince somebody that doesn't know what's going on, you could do that. 
but they would go, uh, well, why is, what do I do here? Why is this equal to that, right? All you're doing is just writing that there. You'd have to say, because cosine squared plus sine squared is always one, therefore cosine squared is one minus sine squared, right? We shouldn't have to remind you of that every single time now. We use this in like nine out of 10 problems, right? The Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem. Every single problem we use the Pythagorean theorem, right? At some point we should have not have to be able to mention it. We should just be able to write down what the hypotenuse is. If you know A and B, you should be able to look at it and write down the hypotenuse right now. Okay, so that's it for 7.4. There is a practice writing assignment here, uh, and it is mislabeled like inside of the document. All right, it says module nine, but it's really this is for module eight. Okay, because we're in module eight here, so oh, we had to squap them. I don't know how they got reversed. So anyhow, this one is more just review, right? Those sum and difference identities, I said memorize them because you can see how you can derive everything from them in like one step. This was the other thing you had to memorize because these were definitions. So far, those are the only two things I've asked you to memorize in this class, right? Math is not about memorization. It's the exact opposite of that. It's being able to figure out as much as possible by remembering as little as possible. That's math, okay? So all they want you to do here is they give you some triangles and they want you to solve for the sides. Okay. We'll look at a couple of these. All right, well, let's see. If this is two and this is three, what's our hypotenuse? The square root of four plus nine, square root of 13, right? You'll should be able to do that by now, okay? What's this hypotenuse? If this is X and that's Y. Yeah, exactly. All right, here's an angle. So all they want you to do is write down your six trig functions, right? Well, over here, it'll say fine sine. Here's my angle, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, what about over here? Let's do like tangent. No, it's not just let's do like cosine. Cosine, here's the angle, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So they just want you to write down your six trig function, right? Once you know all three sides, boom, you're good. Um, this one. Look at part A here. All they give you is an angle and a side. And they want you to find the missing links. Okay, well, the thing is, is, there we go. Look at all these definitions. There's three things, three things. If you know two out of the three, you can solve for the third, right? Okay. So we have an angle and we have the opposite side, right? We'll call this A and we'll call this H, right? Uh, what definition relates an angle, the adjacent and the opposite side? Right? Uh, Adjacent, or that would be tangent. I should say, well, tangent of 20 is opposite over adjacent. So therefore the adjacent has to be five over tangent of 20, right? If we want H, what relates the opposite and the hypotenuse? That would be sine. Sine of 20 is opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse has to be Five over sine of 20. Now you know all three sides. Let's look at this B here, part B. In the right triangle ABC, so they're using this weird notation, right? So if I have a right triangle ABC uh, with right angle C, so they're saying that this is point C. I'll call this A and I'll call this B. Really, I could have called either one of these A or B. It doesn't matter, okay? But they're saying that the right angle is with uh, side C here. Uh, they say B to C has length two and A to B has length five, right? If I called that A and that B between A and B, it's still five, right? 
So this notation here, typically we're going to start using triangles that aren't right triangles, okay? So there's going to be three angles, right? Typically, if you're referring to a point, you use a capital letter. Uh, uh, the angle that goes with the point A would be alpha. The angle that goes with B would be beta. And the angle that goes with C would be gamma. And the side opposite alpha, we would call A. The side opposite beta, we would call B. And the side opposite gamma, we would call C. All right. So the sides, we're going to give them lowercase regular letters. The angles, we're going to stick with uh, Greek letters. And then the points that refer to the vertices of the triangle, we'll use capital letters, right? I mean, you want to think of these all being the same thing. Do, 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 do. There's really three things going on here, a point, an angle, and a side, but they're all related. So you want them to be related as far as the notation that you choose, right? So angle C, another name for it would be gamma, right? This, this notation gets cumbersome, okay? So they just want you to find the three sides. Well, they gave you two out of three. If you need B, well, B squared plus A squared is C squared, right? So B squared plus five squared would have to be four squared. So B should be the square root of 21, right? Which you should be able to do that in your head by now, okay? So this long paragraph and all this stuff, the hard part was just drawing it, right? I threw in all this extra notation because it's going to be important in this next section when we get back from spring break, right? Uh, solving triangles. That means find all the links and all the angles. Let's look at this uh, one here, uh, this radio tower here. This is a good one because the hardest part is introducing a variable when they don't label everything. So what they're saying here is this is 87 feet. All right. They want to figure out what is X. They want to know what this value here is. Okay. Well, there's lots of things we could start labeling, right? What you want to notice is this is a right triangle and this is a right triangle. So if we have right triangles, we can use our trig definitions, right? We know about these angles and we know the adjacent side, right? Both of these share the adjacent side, okay? And this opposite side, this X is related, right? So the hard part is to know, I am going to call this Y from right here. I'm going to introduce this new variable that makes this x plus y, because I want to talk about these angles, this side and that side for these two triangles, okay? Because I got this one, I need to be able to refer to that side. I need to give it a name, okay? And I need to talk about this triangle. So if I gave this one a name, well, I have a name for that triangle too. So all I need to do is write down what I know. The little triangle tangent of the little one is opposite over adjacent, y over 87. Now let's look at the big one. All right, the big triangle is opposite over adjacent. Okay, these two triangles gave me two equations with two unknowns. I, they, they're asking what is x? Well, right here, it has an x in it. I could solve for x. x is going to be uh, 87, tangent of 40 minus y. Oh, I'm doing a solving for x, moving this over and subtracting that. So I got x, but it has this y in it here. Well, you can see that x depends on y. If I make y bigger, then x gets smaller, right? If I make y small, then x is bigger, okay? But I know exactly what y is. I know that from the first triangle. y is 87 tangent of 25 degrees. So just take that and put it right there. So X is 87 tangent 40 minus tangent of 25, right? Both of these tangents have an 87 in front. So I just factored it out, okay? So that's the trick. What, and the hard part here is labeling that Y. 
you might look at this and be like, oh, I'm going to call this hypotenuse one and this hypotenuse two and start writing down like Pythagorean theorems. You know what I mean? You don't want four or five variables, right? Because there's all kinds of things you can label here. With practice, you start to look at it and be like, I need to give this a, a name because this triangle, this big triangle, this side is what's relating these two quantities. So this would be the quickest way to solve this problem, labeling that, right? This is solid, it's 87, doesn't change, right? You don't need to start getting the hypotenuses involved, right? You already have a piece of an opposite side, right? So if I give this a name, I now can refer to this right triangle here. And then if I, with that given a name, the whole thing has a name, and this is gonna connect the X and the Y together through this bigger right triangle. That big right triangle connects these two, okay? So that's why you wanna give that the label. That's the hard part, hard part. Knowing what to introduce, right? Because if you have X's and Y's and H1's and H2's, meh, right? If you start focusing on like, well, here's a triangle, that's not even a right triangle, but I could break it into two right triangles. Then you're starting to like, you know, it gets crazy. So there's your trick. Focus on the right triangles. Try to label what matters to make the problem easy. Okay. Uh, any questions, y'all? Y'all want to get out of here? Just a little bit. Let's go. Let's go. Have a good spring break, y'all. Stay safe. Don't jump off any.